Hey everybody, welcome to Broadway.com's Live at Five. It is Tuesday, March 12th, and I am Ryan Lee Gilbert. And I'm Beth Stevens. And we are here in the studio with our wonderful friend, Caitlin Moynihan. <laughs> Hello. Looking very <laughs> cute, Caitlin. Looking very adorable. <laughs> oh, yes. Thank you. You're thank very you. welcome. We also have an incredible guest with us today. We have Eric Lochtefeld Ooh. from Broadway's King Kong Yay. joining us today. He plays Lumpy in the show, and we're going to talk to him about that character and his huge co-star in the show <laughs> and, and so much more but first let's talk about today's top five some of the most famous princesses are getting the britney spears treatment <laughs> i did not see this one coming yeah no nope. this, see this one no, coming? no there's no. a britney spears musical you guys sort <laughs> of <it> is... yeah <laughs> all right let me explain very strange. let me explain yeah and it's apparently pre- Broadway. Pre-Broadway. All right. Let, mm -hmm. let, let's get let's get into it, let's, shall we? Yeah, let's dive in. It's a new musical yep. comedy based on classic fairy tale stories set to the music of the one and only Britney Spears. Mm -hmm. I love that. A match made in heaven. A match made in a heaven. A match made in TBD. heaven. TBD. It will have its world premiere this fall at the James M. Nederlander Theater in Chicago, and that will be, as we say in the biz, its tryout. Now, let me right. give you this insane plot. <laughs> Yeah. Are you ready? <laughs> it's truly okay. ridiculous. It's, by the yeah. way, it has a title. Once upon a one more time. It rolls off the tongue. <laughs> is, is Look, think. we're excited. <laughs> yeah, no, I love Britney fine. Spears. Yeah. The absolutely. merch is gonna be off yes. the hook. Yeah. Okay, there we go. Find out. In Once Upon a One More Time mm -hmm. doesn't roll. Cinderella, Snow White, and the other fairy tale princesses <laughs> who don't deserve to be named Jack. <laughs> they don't have names. <laughs> the other ones, yeah, you know, you know the other ones, mm -hmm. gather for mm -hmm. their book club. I didn't know they had a book club. <laughs> I feel like they had day jobs. So, yeah, so, Cinderella I mean, was kind of busy. I mean, okay, I, you would, yeah. When a rogue fairy godmother, I mean, the best kind, right, drops the feminine mes mystique, the we, book, the book, Betty Friedan, yeah, Mark the second wave of feminism, you know, yeah. <laughs> into their course of laps, we'll, we'll talk about that later, spurring a royal revelation. So we're, we're inserting feminism into the princess's book club. Yep. And there's going to be a... They're going to take back... Britney Spears, yeah. looking forward to how Toxic fits in, mm -hmm. et cetera, et yes. cetera. Yep, absolutely. The Oops, musical features an original book by John Hartmere, who worked on Bear, yes. the musical. Yep. And it will be directed by Tony nominee Kristen Hanji. Rock of Ages. Rock of Ages, exactly. The musical will begin previews in Chicago on October 29th with an opening night of November 13th. And it's a limited engagement through December 1st. Now, there is more news, but we could talk about this for the rest right, of the time. Yeah. But we'll move on. We'll yeah. move on. <laughs> <laughs> You now only have a few more days to go see this premiere musical off-Broadway. Yes, Susie Kahn's new musical, Chick Flick the Musical. It's having its off-Broadway off premiere production right now at the West Side Theater. Sadly, it will be closing this Saturday, March 16th. It will unless a rogue fairy godmother unless drops Unless a rogue in. drops the feminine mystique <laughs> in that book you club. Because there happen. is a book club. Um, yes, it's all about uh, it, it, you join a group of friends as uh, they play their favorite drinking game during their you know, book club meeting. It's lots of fun. It, play, it will have played 11 previews and 12 regular performances at the time of closing. It stars Megan Sakura, Sharon, Sharon Catherine Brown, Lindsay Nicole Chambers, and Carla Duran. Great um, cast. It's a great cast. And Suzy Khan, book, lyrics, music. It's a fun show. Um, if you haven't had a chance to check it out, make sure you do it before this Saturday. Fun little show. And one of our Fetch friends just landed a new TV gig. Ashley Park, who just ended her just run in left. Mean Girls on March 10th on Sunday, yeah. mm -hmm. has nabbed, that's what it says on my paper here, nabbed a role in Jason Gow's new comedy pilot. It's, does it have a name? It I don't think, I believe it is untitled. It's, it's untitled. It's untitled. It's untitled. Yes. As yet untitled. So uh, this is from Jessica Gow, who did the Emmy-winning Rick and Morty. Mm -hmm. And yes, untitled at present. Um, it follows a first-generation Chinese-American struggling to set boundaries with her exhausting family. <laughs> oh, don't we all relate? Exhausting, yeah. Uh, when her well-off grandmother dies, she is named the sole inheritor and becomes the clan's unwilling new matriarch. Mm. Good for you, Ashley Park. Absolutely. We love that. No, and she's busy with it. She also... She's got a lot going on. Yeah, she's got Tales of the City on Netflix, Correct. which she's also going to be a part of, the reboot of that. Yeah. She's busy. She's yeah. busy. I mean, she's, she's amazing. Talented. Yeah, everybody she's wants awesome. a piece we love of her. Ashley Park. <laughs> Good for you, Ashley. And a Broadway alum has joined the highly anticipated live-action remake. 
Alan Tudyk is soups busy. He's going to be voicing the role of Iago, who was famously voiced by Gilbert Gottfried in the original movie. You're not talking about movie. Othello, are you? No, <laughs> no, 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 no. This this Iago <laughs> is a he's like a parrot, right? Yeah, yeah. it's a little different. Yeah, um, and so he's of course Alan Tudyk is an Emmy nominee. He's also been on Broadway several times. Prelude to a Kiss, Spam a Lot, and Epic Proportions. Um, this cast of Aladdin, a new trailer came out today, yeah. which I think settled a lot of people's nerves. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people were nervous about Aladdin. We get the trailer, nervous around here. You know, like these are <laughs> sacred properties. We also got to hear a little bit of singing in this trailer, yeah. which is exciting. Um, the cast is Mena Masoud in the title role, Naomi Scott as Princess Jasmine, and Will Smith, of course, is the genie. He's blue and everything. As uh, he the should be. Yeah, as he should be. The film mm -hmm. will arrive in cinemas on May 24th, and now we know Alan Tudyk will be a part of it. The role of Iago is super fun. Good for Alan Tudyk. <laughs> And an exclusive PIX11 special is coming your way. We have had a long-standing partnership with PIX11, and um, that's the Broadway channel, and they do Broadway profiles with Tamsin Fidal, who Absolutely. has like nine gazillion trillion, that's not a number, but I'm just going it's for it. very high. Emmys, because yes. she's very talented. And this is a special exclusive episode of Broadway Profiles with Tamsin Fidal. will air on PIX11 in New York on March 17th. St. Patrick's Day mm -hmm. at 6 o'clock p.m. And it will feature the share shows, Stephanie J. Block. Am I not selling this hard? Because this is so good. <laughs> the share shows, Stephanie J. Block, My Fair Ladies, Laura Benanti, Mean Girls is Kate Rockwell and Taylor Lauderman. So a lot of people who can really sing. Big shows. Yeah, Big I'm still, singers. Yeah. And also Paul Wintorek has a Broadway.com minute. He's just not going to sing in it. I'm pretty he sure. He should. He, he should, should singing He's the minute. He's not a belter. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> and there are a few other things that you can check out on the site right now, of course. Uh, the spring preview today is Burn This with David Furr and Brandon Uranowitz. I very with those gentlemen. You did. How did it go? What did you, you learn? I learned a lot because they play the other roles in Burn This. Course, Everyone yeah. probably knows the central. Adam Driver and Carrie Russell. Correct. Right. The central relationship. And they're they're very insightful. And they're both and like entertaining. two of the most exactly entertaining yeah. guys around. You, uh, There is a new Five Secrets with Kate Rockwell from Mean Girls, of course. Uh, episode four of George Salazar's Be opening More Chill night. Backstage Live. It's opening. Very exciting. Um, the title of show, Actors Fund Reunion Concert, happened, and we have photos from that. And uh, Christina Al Alabado begins performances as Gretchen in Mean Girls tonight. And we have a uh, we have a production photo, I believe, there as well. There we go. Super exciting. Yes. Yeah. All right, Beth. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm gonna get out of here. Please. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Ryan. <laughs> love you. Love you back, babe. Caitlin. Would you, please, Caitlin. Would you tell us about today's guest? <laughs> yes. As we said before, we have Eric Lochtefeld here in the studio with us today because he is currently in King Kong on. Broadway, yes. Mm -hmm. He has previously been seen on Broadway, Metamorphosis, and Misery. He has been seen in numerous off-Broadway productions at Primary Stages, Roundabout, Playwright Horizons, MCC, and a whole lot more. He's a very, very talented man. You may have seen him on screen when he was in Madam Secretary or The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel or Law & Order. Again, he's been everywhere. He's done a whole lot of stuff. Follow him on social media and make sure to follow the show on social media, King Kong B-Way. And leave all of your questions in the comments below. Please welcome Eric and Ryan. Hello there, sir. Hi, Ryan. Thank you for joining me on Live at Five. It's so great to have you. I'm really excited to be here. I'm digging your shirt, by oh, the way. Oh, thank you very much. You'd yes. make our playwright Jack Thorne Jack very, very Thorne, happy. Jack Thorne, I was going to say. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> Harry Potter and the Cursed Child, of course. Uh, but today, we are yeah. talking about King Kong. We are. You are part of this incredible show. We are big fans of it oh, over thank here. Thank you. Um, it was in our top uh, five shows of the year. We also singled out Christiani Pitts, of course, who the is amazing Christiani Pitts. Yeah. How does it feel to be a part of this production? How are things going over at the Broadway Theater? I don't know that I've ever had as much fun working on something. It's the most unique thing. I think we all felt when we started that we were starting like a grand adventure together. Mm -hmm. I bet, yeah. <laughs> I bet. And certainly doing things that, that people have not been doing on Broadway before. And uh, it it has fulfilled all of those sort of like dreams you have of a, of a great adventure. It was really hard work, but it's I, so great that it's, you know, paying off. Yeah. I mean, tell me a little bit about how you, uh, if in case you don't already know, King Kong is in King Kong. He is just this insanely huge puppet that takes how many different people to sort of make 
him it's, do everything. It's 14 every night. people 14 total. 14 people. Yeah. I mean, he, it's just, it's such a spectacle. What was it like approaching this project and getting prepared for it? Was, I, I would imagine it was so much different from what you've done before. Uh, yeah. Uh, first of all, it's just like the scale of it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, no, it truly. It's an epic story, and we're telling it in an epic fashion. Um, and everything about it is, you know, I'm used to doing mostly uh, new plays mm -hmm. off Broadway. So to be on Broadway in a big budget musical right. was really, really a thrill and exciting. Super scary. Your Broadway too. musical debut. This is my Broadway musical debut. Right. Yeah. So uh, I'll never forget, we first got to the theater and Eric William Morris, who plays Carl Denham, we kind of both <laughs> held each other's hands and looked at that 1700 seat house <laughs> at the Broadway theater. I was like, OK, ma'am, we are going to we are going to do this. Yeah. Um, and what's unique about uh, my role, Lumpy, is that he doesn't really exist in the sort of like cultural background that we know of King Kong. He's sort of right. a new invention by Jack Thorne, our book writer. And so it was really exciting to sort of create and add a new um, character to um, to the sort of mythology of King Kong. Yeah, and the, the character of Lumpy is so necessary. I mean, if he's just the, the sort of the moral compass, right? Would uh -huh. you agree of this story? Like, he's the kind of, like, the beating heart of it a oh, little bit, right? Like so nice to say. Yeah. We were saying earlier, oh, yeah, like, Lumpy's you. the character that you're just like, oh, Lumpy. One of my, one of my favorite <laughs> things is, like, uh, I don't think I'm getting, getting anything away, but, like, uh, I'm looking over at, like, <laughs> like looking at the we're, we're okay. <laughs> 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 but um, uh, uh, people call me by, uh, he's referred to as Lumpy in the uh, in the program, but his right. real name is Len in the show. Yes. And you find that out in the first scene when you meet him. It's not a big, it's okay, I'm good. <laughs> we got I'm the good. shot guys. Cut it, cut it now. Um, um, and w one of the greatest things is, you know, when I'm talking to people after the show, they'll call me Len after the show. And that, I think it speaks to like what that character does and says in the show. And Drew Maconia, our extraordinary director and choreographer, described him, I remember, in the audition as, he's like a human version of Kong. Mm -hmm. um, and, and because our Kong is incredibly expressive, he doesn't speak English, he doesn't speak our language. Right. Um, and so it was, it was essential for them to have a character who could talk about the sort of moral dilemmas that come up with the characters after we meet Kong. And, right. and that's where Lumpy fits in, and it was, really fun to kind of create my own monster. In some ways, he thinks he's monstrous. He's not a monstrous character, but he, he thinks of himself as a monster, and so it was really fun to create yeah. my own sort of version of, of, a, of, of, of a monster for this for this giant monster musical that we're doing. Right, no, there are a few characters in the show that kind of have these parallel journeys. You know, yeah. they're age of f facing rejection and facing not being accepted, and, you know, the all kind of going through different experiences, and Lumpy being one of those characters yeah. that kind of has this whole arc and journey by by the end, and, you know, befriends Anne right away, and how that becomes important later. It's, it's fascinating. It's yeah, absolutely... it's really smart on the part of Jack and the whole creative team who put this, who put this together. You know, we, we wanted to... Um, honor the sort of story of King Kong that we all know, but right. obviously it's 2019, <laughs> and there are some things that we needed to yeah. adjust and re-examine to bring Kong into uh, 2019. I mean, our play is set in 1931, um, but it, there are issues in the in the initial and the source material that can be challenging, and so it, it was important to do that. And I'm so glad that you noticed that there are these sort of like Absolutely. parallel journeys no, happening it's... with everyone, because you can. What I kind of love about our show is like. You can totally go and you can turn off your brain if you want and just be blown away. Because mm -hmm. what we're doing with Kong is like, it's nothing I've ever it's witnessed in the theater. Term. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, but there's also, if you want, to, there is a story to hold Certainly, on to and an important yeah. story to hold on to. And that's why it's so moving when I meet people after the show who've followed Lumpy's journey and who followed Christiani's journey and Eric's journey, which is quite, the mm -hmm. other Eric's journey, right. which, is a, which is a sort of darker journey, um, that you know they connect with us and they... You know, the fact that they followed the story and call me Len after the show was so <laughs> no, That's nice. very touching, absolutely. And not to mention uh, Eddie Perfect's music for the show as well is just absolutely incredible. I'm, I'm also excited for Beetlejuice. Can I give yes, a shout out for Beetlejuice? No, course, because yes. they're going to start up soon. Eddie and Perfect having a very big year. I yes. know. So good <laughs> by. Right. The theaters are so close Right, too. yeah. We I know. We wink at each other. I know. We were hoping they were going to... We, we recently had a... We renamed the street in front of King Kong, King Kong Court, which was really, right. really fun. But we also think we should maybe... The blocks between <laughs> <laughs> the Winter Garden and the Broadway should be Eddie the, Perfect Way. Yes, like, I like that. Owns yes. that um, street. We're going to call up de Blasio. Okay, we're going to let him know. Another street name. 
Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. No, and the, I know that when I was there, the audience was just, the, the audience knew they were kind of seeing something new for the very first time. We were all being blown away by the spectacle. But what is that experience like, just performance after performance, night after night for you and that cast to just, be, and it was such a mixed audience. I mean, there were children there that were just eating it all up, but the, the adults were having, what is it like from your perspective to just see audiences wowed in that way that this show does every time? Kong has one of the best entrances in <laughs> I've ever seen in the theater. It's a really spectacular entrance. That I'm not going to give away. But, yeah. um, no, truly. He has a great entrance, and, and every day we get, to, we get to experience, I mean, w we've spent a lot of time with him. We're still amazed by him, and uh, I love talking about Kong because I learn new things <laughs> every mm -hmm. week about him. Um, but what's amazing is to, you know, we get to experience with the audience every night what they're seeing, and it, yeah. it's such a thrill. And, you know, if we have, you know, a student matinee, the kids lose their <laughs> minds, but to hear the adults scream, too, when <laughs> yeah. it enters is no, really... No, I, I was... <laughs> it's <laughs> really, really something, and it produces, like, a, 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 you know, it's a jolt of adrenaline. You're you're seeing something of that size. He's 20 feet tall, um, uh and it, it, it's like a jolt of electricity through the audience and then through us. I have to say, yeah. um, we're always super jazzed after his entrance. Um, I also say, though, you know, uh, the choreography in the show is really so extraordinary, good. Dream McConey's yeah. choreography. And it's, it's a reflection of how athletic it is mm -hmm. to move Kong. Yeah. And all of our sort of choices were made around Kong, and that is one of the exciting ones. So uh, I also get a kick out of... The opening number, you know, we enter New York in 1931. It's and it bustling, does. It plops it's you right down into that. And, yeah. um, that's another really exciting moment to see that kind of gymnastic choreography. Certainly. Um, so yeah, uh, it, it's it's just a it's a it's a thrill and it's it's moving. People are very m moved by him. It's uh, a very moving story. I think people kind of forget. Like the, the, everyone kind of remembers the the big points of King Kong, but you kind of forget just what a truly touching story it is, and how emotionally affected you are moved by at the end. And I think what we're brought back to is um, w w there was actually video of us seeing him for the first time, which mm. you can see online. Um, you can see on the website, uh, the King Kong website, and it. It's really moving to see him. He's very, very expressive. And um, it's like we get to relive that moment when we first met Kong kind of every night with the audiences that come yeah. to see it. And that's really, really ex exciting. I will say, like, uh, uh, I did have some, my daughter's friends, I have a nine year old, and some of her friends were like, they were really sad after the show. <laughs> no, and I don't yeah. mean to say, like, it's, you know, <laughs> people have a different reaction right. um, to the show. But um, I was surprised at how. I think we were all surprised when we first met Kong how much we connect to him, how his eyes are so alive, mm -hmm. and how, and how you can emotionally connect to him so. Absolutely, quickly. absolutely. Was I, I know we want to start taking some questions from uh, people that are watching, but yeah. was performing always going to uh, be the future for you, or were you involved in athletics when you were younger? Or I was. I I really loved. I moved around a lot when I was a kid. Every two mm. or three years, I moved around a lot, and I remember I was very into sports. And then we moved to um, Concord, Massachusetts, and everyone played lacrosse. Yeah. Oh, it was yeah. fifth grade. <laughs> hey. Oh, we got lacrosse in here. I had no idea what this sport was. These kids were what? running around with sticks, and, and I was like, what is this? And they'd all been playing it since they were like, you know, yeah. like five or six years old. Yeah, so yeah. I was lost. And um, <laughs> I think my mom just was like, there was a great um, a little acting group for kids in, in Concord. Mm. It was called Act Tunes. And she forced me to go to an audition. And as we all know in the theater, like you immediately find this incredible family. And right. I, I, from that moment on, just, just love the people I, I met. And I'm still friends with them. They all came to the show oh, like fantastic. a few months ago. Oh, wow. um, so uh, uh, that was really the, the beginning of it for me. And I didn't know if I could make it into a career. I think what's interesting, my wife is in the business as well. And she's I think a playwright, right? She's a playwright, yeah, and she writes for TV, and she ran a theater company in Chicago um, <laughs> called wow. Looking Glass Theater Company. Oh, Hi, of Looking course. Glass. Oh, yeah. wow. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, we did not have parents that were involved in the theater. So it, it, it was very, 
we never knew we would take this journey. Sure, but sure. it's um, it's rare to do something that you love and that inspires you. Even rarer to work with a twenty foot tall <laughs> gorilla <laughs> right. marionette eight shows a week. Um, yeah. But uh, you can't predict that. Happen. You, <laughs> I never would have predicted that would happen. Yeah. What would our What would our viewers like to know yes. from there? So um, Michelle says that your other Broadway credits are plays. So what drew you to this giant musical and King Kong specifically? I think that I. I've done musicals off Broadway, mm -hmm. um, and I'd never quite tackled the, the the Broadway musical. I'd come close to a bunch of things in the past, and I, I think it's always good to push yourself to do things you're maybe not that comfortable doing. Oh, I'll never forget this. So I I have a brief. I don't dance much in the show. <laughs> I have a brief dancing moment, and I warned Drew, who's a terrific dancer, and everyone on our show are these amazing dancers. Like you know, you didn't put me through a dance call, and he's like, I know, I know. I just I have a feeling. You'll be all right. Um, but what Drew said is that everyone in our show in King Kong, which is unique, everyone is doing something that they're not comfortable doing, whether mm -hmm. they're dancers primarily mm -hmm. who are speaking lines, um, you know, they are launching 20 feet off of the shoulder of King Kong. We are all doing things we've never done before. And I think that is what is so exciting about um, uh, why I was so drawn to, to working on this piece is, is pushing myself to do something I had never done before. Certainly, yeah. And being with a group of people who were in the same situation. Right. And I also, uh, before we, um, Mary Zimmerman's Metamorphoses, you, that you made your Broadway debut. Was that 2002? Is that right yeah, around that's that? right. That's, yeah. What was, I mean, that was such an experience. That play was such a sort of one of a kind thing. What yeah. do you remember most fondly from that experience? What do you, what do you, uh, yeah, what place in your mind is that? Well, it's a you. show that I grew up with. So I was, the first time I did it was in college. We created at it my senior year at Northwestern. And so um, it's a play that I've grown up with. And I think these stories, they're all Greek myths set in a pool of water. And these stories speak to you in different ways mm. at different points in your life. I did, we did a 10 year anniversary production in Chicago uh, a number of years ago. And I remember reapproaching these stories married with a child you know yeah. so um that's what i remember most of it also you know it it, it opened r off broadway right after september 11th and right. to, to be a part of a production that we had been a part of but that spoke in an entirely new way um to people and in a way that we thought helped people was um a once in a lifetime yeah experience plus you know it was a show that i did in high school i mean in college that then moved to broadway it's a very I mean, unusual road to broadway absolutely yeah. but yeah how incredible yeah. amazing and i know you have a good story for this because you told me before you got here but <laughs> alec wants to know if you've had any onstage mishaps with King Kong, yes, or can King I bring Kong. other productions you in? Do whatever you want. Of course, course you want. Just a few nights ago in King Kong. All right, the secret of the Broadway theater is there is there's one bathroom <laughs> on the main level of the theater, um, and it, it's it's attached to my bathroom. And we we're mid show, and um, I think a crew member went in to use the bathroom, and out of nowhere, Christiani Pitts comes running. She's in her wig cap and underwear. Yeah. She's storming down the hall. She's got like two minutes to do a costume change <laughs> and use the bathroom and she got to the bathroom and it was locked and she sort of screamed and she was like a whirling dervish and yeah. she screamed and she was like ah and she ran upstairs and just barely made it um to use her bathroom and then just barely made it on stage <laughs> my favorite theater story though ever is I, I i was able to do a production of the glass menagerie at berkeley repertory theater with rita moreno oh my goodness oh, my oh wow she's a legend. I, she she yeah, is the only, a, word, yeah. is the only word to describe her. <laughs> we is. had to do a performance where we we had to get a standing ovation, and they were going to get a picture of it, at which point we are like, we're never going to get a standing ovation. <laughs> and Rita was like, I know how to get a standing ovation. <laughs> I worked with Yul Brynner. We're like, right, you were, in the, you were in the King and I movie with Yul Brynner. She's like, this is how you get a standing ovation. This is how you do it. You walk on stage, you look at the audience, you throw your hands in the air, and they will rise. So I'm gonna do that. And we're like, Rita, this is not, this is not a good idea. So it's a pretty like m mildly responsive audience, and we're already dreading this moment. We all take our bows. Nobody is standing. Rita Moreno st stares at the entire cast, walks to the center of the stage, stares down the audience, throws her hands in the air, and nobody. <laughs> 
stood up. Um, <laughs> At which point she started laughing. How dare those audience? We started laughing. Stand for the queen. Them. I know. Stand I know. For Rita. <laughs> but it's really one of my favorites. Just a gonzo story from Rita Moreno. You know what? That's Rita Moreno. It is Rita Moreno. We, we stand for Rita now. Yes, we do. <laughs> Eric, thank you so much oh my for gosh, joining us talking for about me. King Kong. Make sure you go see King Kong at Broadway's Broadway Theater. Absolutely incredible experience, sir. Make sure you come back and ch chat with us anytime. Oh, you I will like. come back anytime. We'd Thank love you. to. I want to talk more about the Britney Spears musical. It's, yes, come debate <laughs> okay. the, that. I'm ready for that experience with us. <laughs> Thank you so much, sir. Caitlin, why don't you take us out? Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. We are live at five every single day on Facebook. You can listen to us wherever you get your podcast by searching for hashtag live at five and hitting that subscribe button. Be sure to tune in tomorrow. We talk to Will Swenson of Lincoln Center Theater's Nantucket Sleigh Ride.